What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another Flipping for Profit video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about what I do with the cash that I do get from cash transactions from selling things locally. On top of that, I am gonna be talking about going to the thrift stores earlier today because I honestly didn't get much, but we are gonna be talking about that. So let's start with the thrift stores. I did have to go and take my fiance Ashley to go and get her hair and nails done. So while I was in the area dropping her off, I did go to a couple thrift stores. So I went to Value Village and the first thing I will note is I wasn't expecting, because I haven't been in a while, but all of their cash at the fronts are all self-served. They're self-checkouts, and that's just to me odd, because I get that now they don't have to pay an employee to be up there, so it's cutting their costs. But for one, those machines are more expensive, so to get those in is a hefty price up front. But on top of that, that just makes it easier for people to scam them take a price off of something that's cheaper and just scan it at the front for something that they're actually were selling for more money. And more people are gonna do that because when I was there, the prices at this value village have definitely gone up. And the only thing that I found was these hockey cards. So these hockey cards, there's two packs here. They were $3.99 each. So after taxes was $10. And stuff like this used to be maybe $1.99 or $2.99, but now it's $3.99. So you're paying $4 each for these. And to me, that's nothing compared to some of their other prices. A lot of their other stuff has definitely gone up and I see nothing else that I can make money off of. This here wasn't really to make money off of. I might be able to because a lot of these are icebreaker cards from 1996. So I don't know if there's a complete set in here, but I think there might be just opening them up briefly and looking at them. If not, there's a lot of players that I collect, Patrick Waugh, Martin Brodeur, other players of those top tier names. So it's really cool to add stuff like this to my personal collection, but if I can make money off of it, I think that's a great deal. But $10, I don't think the value is there personally, but I will update you guys in the future on that. But yeah, it was just crazy to me that literally the items just have like a little tag like this now, and all you scan is that little QR code and it comes up on the cash of how much you paid. So all somebody has to do is rip one of these off of one of the cheaper items and scan it at the self checkout. Yes, there's an employee there watching, but they're watching all six checkouts at once. So they're not necessarily watching you. So I assume there's a lot of people that either A, save these, because I'm assuming this would be able to scan again at $3.99 and they'll just bring it with them next time, or they'll just rip stuff off there, rip these off of items that are there for cheaper and then putting them on ones that are more expensive. And I think a lot of people are likely going to be doing that. So now what do I do with my cash transactions and the cash that I get from those cash transactions? So normally locally, I will either accept cash or e-transfer. I don't accept PayPal because there's a lot of scammers on PayPal, especially recently, but a lot of my sales are about 50, 50, half of them are on eBay and half of them are locally. So it means half of my sales are usually a cash transaction or most of those are cash transactions. Sometimes people prefer e-transfer because it's easier for them. But a lot of people, if they're just buying locally, they'll just bring cash and hand me cash. Now, after a while, the cash does accumulate and it's too much for me to just keep at home. So I will have to go and take it to the bank, but I don't go after every sale. Let's say I sell something for $20. I'm not gonna go to the bank right away and deposit that $20. I'm gonna bring it home, let it build up, and then eventually take that large amount and take that to the bank to make a deposit. So here's my setup. Usually I keep everything in like this tin right here. Now, normally I will keep about three to $400 saved for future items that I'm gonna be buying and flipping for profit. If I'm gonna be paying cash and buying them locally, I will just take from this tin. So right here is $405, I just counted it. And there is some five and $10 bills here. I like keeping the five and $10 bills extra and I don't take those to the bank. The reason for that is if I'm selling something for $15 and somebody gives me a 20, then I can bring them a five or I do have change as well if I do need it. So I can give them exact change back because sometimes people don't have exact change and it's nice for me to have it on hand in case they do need it. And here is the $1,000 that I have to deposit today. Now again, just a reminder, that's not me saying the past three to four months was just me getting $1,000 in cash sales. There was higher amounts, but everything gets put into this tin here. And whenever I go to buy something to flip for profits, I do take out of this tin as well. So the, the amounts that is in this tin, it goes up and down over the course of each month. 
And after a while, if there is a large amount still in here, I will go and take that to the bank as well. And I will keep about three to 400 in here for future purchases. If I buy video game lots or console bundles, I will have the money here. So I don't have to go to the bank each time that I am going to be buying something to flip for profit. So this is not three to four months worth of sales. This is just what has accumulated and still is in here after three to four months. So taking this to the bank, I don't like just taking the money. I like taking it and putting it in this money bag here. To me, that just looks more professional. I will zip it up. Now, this is $1,000 today, so that's easy enough for me to remember. But if it was a different amount, for example, $1,350, which I've done before, I will write that on a piece of paper and put that inside as well. Just so whenever I go to the bank, they do see that. And then I do remember that amount. So whenever they count it, I make sure it's the exact same. But for me today, $1,000 should be easy enough for me to remember. So I did just want to quickly mention that because I've had a lot of people from my flipping for profit videos ask me how often I go to the bank and how often do I go and deposit the money from cash sales. And like I said, it's anywhere between usually four to six months, I will go to the bank. But like I said, all the money from cash sales just go into this tin that I just showed you. And then for any items that I do purchase that are locally that I'm paying with it with cash, I will just take out of that tin. So the thousand dollars I'm depositing today isn't necessarily just me saying the past four months, it's been a thousand dollars in sales. My sales have been higher than that. It's just this is what's in there now, so it's time to just take it to the bank because I'm not planning on buying too much recently. Like I showed you guys or mentioned, thrift stores today was kind of a bust. It was just hockey cars for me. I did go to another thrift store as well, and the only thing that I found there was a seen it sports game that was sealed. Looking up sold comps, they some of them sold for $15 with free shipping, some sold with $20 with free shipping, and unfortunately... With the free shipping, I'm not going to be making money off of it because I have to pay $5 for it. So there's really no money to be made. I was thinking about it. I held on to it throughout the whole store and I couldn't make money off of it. So I decided to leave it. I did find a general electric radio as well while I was there. This was at the Salvation Army. So Value Village, I found nothing but the hockey cards. But the Salvation Army, I did find the Scenic game, which I passed on. And the General Electric radio, which I also passed on. And this General Electric radio... I did look up sold comps for it, but first, before I switched to sold comps, I seen one listed for $70, so I thought there was great potential. However, whenever I flipped it to sold comps, they were about $20 to $25, and I had to pay $8 plus tax for it, so not a lot, a lot of money to be made. And those radios, I've always had to reduce my price after a while on eBay, so I knew after, over time, it was just less and less profit that I could potentially make. So I decided to pass on them. So hopefully I do find stuff soon to flip for profit. I'm looking more for comic books and video game lots because I've had great luck on them. But I did want to make this video today showing you guys what I do with my cash transactions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.